Hey guys, Jaws of Shark Reviews here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Studio Series Voyager Class Rise of the Beast Optimus Prime. So, here he is in his truck cab mode, and yeah, so, um, yes, this is the first uh, Studio Series Rise of the Beast exclusive figure, because um, it's not part of the main Studio Series line, at least not yet. Um, that is because it is released under the Buzzworthy Bumblebee, uh, line, um, and thus meaning it's a Target exclusive, which also means it's probably hard for many people to get a hold of this guy, um, but I was, uh, one of the lucky ones to find him. Uh, there was three on the shelf, and I immediately picked one of them up, and yeah, so here we are. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, but before we take a look at Prime himself, let's take a look at the packaging, so he is Stu Series number 102, so they still, you know, give him the number and stuff. Uh, so here's the packaging, I uh, really dig it, I mean, it's, um, it would still be nice to get a normal in, normal release, so, you know, it's more fitting in with the, you know, rest of the line, but, um, I guess that's all we got for now, so, um, obviously you get the Buzzworthy Bumblebee Studio Series theme packaging, and of course, you got a little Optimus, <laughs> a little Optimus Primal, <laughs> but you get a, photo, a little photo of Optimus Primal right there, monkeying out, and then you get typical Buzzworthy Bumblebee artwork. Here's the rest of that same artwork again. Here's the right side, and this is the only like actual render here we got of Optimus. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, on the top, you got Studio Series Rise of the Beasts on the bottom. Just all this, and on the back we get uh, CGI renders right there of him in his robot mode and truck mode, and it says you know street festival uh, stakeout that that's what the backdrop is. We'll take a look at that at the end of the review, and it just says this right here. You can read that if you want, and then well there's all this right here. And that is it for the packaging, so let's get right down to Prime himself. So, um, yeah, this is definitely one of my most highly anticipated figures of the year, because, I mean, you know, it's, like, this, you know, most accurate, like, mainline version of, you know, the Optimus Prime from the newest movie, so, of course, that easily be on my top ten most typed for the year. And yeah, so, um, and he turned out really, really nice. Um, I do have a little gripes with him, but, um, but overall, he's, uh, really good. But why that is, well, let's dive into that right now. So, let's get up close, look here at the cab. Really nicely done here in the front. Um, you know, looks mostly spawned to the movie. On this side right here, he gets a nice silver. And I really love what they did with the wheels. These are actually the same ones that they used on the SS38 Optimus Prime, the one from the Bumblebee movie. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, because one of the designers actually showed, like, what parts that they reused from that uh, Prime. And surprisingly, besides the, you know, the six wheels, the only other part that they reused was the windshields, like the windows right here. And even then, like, in that one, they used, like, a dark blue plastic. Um, here they use it, like, in a kind of black kind of clear plastic. Uh, we'll take a look at that when we compare the two. Um, but it's supposed to be the same window piece that they used on that Prime. So yeah, besides that, it's a brand new mold, so that's really nice. Uh, this is my only gripe with um, this truck mode. It's this thing. Now, a lot of people have been, you know, bashing on it. I don't think it looks that bad. Like, I mean, well, this this part looks fine. Uh, but this part, yeah, they, I mean, it doesn't look good, but I don't see what else they could have done to, you know, fix that. Again, they could have reused the legs from the SS38, but, you know, it's, yeah. <laughs> we'll discuss my thoughts on those legs when, you know, uh, you know, we do the robot mode comparisons. Um, but yeah, this, this is my only gripe, though. Uh, I mean, this... I mean, this being right here, that's accurate and stuff, but it's, you know, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's just a bunch of blue kibble right here, but, um, yeah. Here's the top. I, uh, you know, it would be nice if they used, like, a red plastic right here, so it's more consistent. 
And the bottom here, well, this typical bomb of the truck, Optimus Prime, you know, right there. Uh, no visible head syndrome, thankfully. So, uh, yeah, really, really nice overall, though. Uh, do quite dig it. Now, apparently some people have been swapping this uh, this Prime's legs with the SS38, and, like, they have it transformed. And we'll say, that does make the truck look better. It doesn't make the robot mode look better, though, because, well, the feet on that one. Uh, again, we'll look at that in the uh, robot mode comparisons later on, so... Um, yeah, really, really nice. Of course, you can roll, so, hey, that's nice. And, yeah, so, uh, that's pretty much it for all the details and stuff. Now, for the accessories, he does come with his cannon, which obviously was in the movie. Uh, however, just the little cannon piece, it's not, like, the whole, um, big, like, arm thing. Uh, so, but there are upgrade kits for that, so you can always check those out if you want. Uh, but yeah, here's this. It's just in, uh, all gray plastic. Um, but I think it looks alright. Uh, it would be nice if it was a little bigger, but, yeah. Um, here's all around. So yeah, um, for storage, there are two slots right here. And you can just put that right in there. And there you go. So that's, uh, one of the accessories. The other accessory is his sword. Um, and I think they did a really nice job with it. It's like in this, like, kind of gunmetal gray paint, and it's over blue plastic. I think it looks nice. It would have been nice if they had add more paint, because obviously in the movie there was a lot more detail to this than what we're seeing here, but, you know, I could live with it. Uh, so for storage for that, you're gonna have to, uh, untransform, uh, this part. You're just gonna have to split this apart. Um, that's all you gotta do. And you gotta go under here, let's look under here. And you gotta take the sword. So there's this little uh, peg right here, and there's two holes on either side. And what you want to do is you just want to kind of bring this in, and make sure it's positioned like this specifically. And you just want to put that peg into that hole right there, and oops, just kind of squeeze that all in. And what, what I really like though is that they mold in like uh like this like little clear area. As you can see right here, specifically so that the, the sword, like, this part can actually go in there. Like, you see right there? That, that I really like that they did that. Uh, but yeah, then finally you just want to squeeze this all together. Make sure it's all compact together. And then once you got that, there you guys have the sword storage. I think that's uh, really nice. So, you know, uh, nice and clean. You know, hides away everything. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not too noticeable when you see it, so that I do like. Um... Even the cannon, it's not too noticeable. So, uh, pretty good, pretty good storage. It doesn't look too ridiculous. So I do like that. Um, but um, yeah. Oh yeah. Another complaint is uh, they didn't give him a trailer hitch. I mean, not that I care because he didn't have a trailer in the movie. But it would be a nice little inclusion. They did give that to the Bumbley movie Prime. But I mean, to be fair, we did see him with a trailer. It's just they didn't give him one. I wonder if someday though they will. But we shall see. So. Anyways, now for the alt mode size comparisons, uh, here he is with RC right here. Oop. Yeah, there's those two. Um, here he is with Bumblebee. Here he is with Airazor. And let's bring in Shiora as well. There's those three together. Uh, here he is with Battle Trap. Here he is with Scourge. Um, here he is with the SS38 Optimus Prime, which, despite him turning into, you know, uh, a semi-truck that resembles his G1 self, it, was, it wasn't accurate to how it appeared in the movie, so, in a way, I kind of hope that they redo the Bully Movie Prime. I mean, I like the figure, but I think they could just do it better, like, I wrote, the raw mode's definitely based off of concept art, so, um, but again, this still isn't a bad figure, and, uh, oh yeah, as you can see, yeah, he's got the clear blue windows, yeah, they're shaped the same, so, I can believe that, you know, they use the same ones. 
And last but not least, here is the mainline Optimus Prime. This one blows this one out of the water, definitely. Um, because that, that, that's, what's, that's what Steel Series is all about, right? Blowing all the old figures out of the water. But you can still enjoy the old ones, too. Even though this one's not really that old. <laughs> it's only a couple months old. Well, technically, mold's been around for a year. Because, you know, Hasbro factories, production, all that stuff. But it, it's been out in the public for a few months now. Um, so that is it for the alt mode. So let's get right down into the transformation. Well, so starting off, let's remove the, uh, Accessories, get those out of the way. All right, so um, out. all right, so starting off, uh, what you want to do is you want to um, uh, flip in these right here, and then you just want to untab those blue pieces right here, and then split apart the legs, and then just next move down the feet. Then rotate them forwards and do the same thing right here. Uh, then next, you just want to uh, swivel down this blue piece right here. And then bring down the shin piece right here. And this will all tab together. And just do the same thing right here. And connect that. There we go. Now we got the legs done. Hooray! <laughs> okay, so let's... Bring up the camera here. He's a <laughs> he's a standing up truck now. He he walks. He walks. Okay, so um, then the next thing is you just want to simply flip up the this panel right here and do the same on this side. And then after that, um, untab the grill piece right here and then bring that down and then after that just move out the arms and at the same time bring down these panels and then after that you just want to flip up these gray pieces up here and then they will snap into place and then bring the arms forward but before you want before you do that you just want to kind of bring this back around here and then um, as you can see those gray pieces there um, between the shoulders will move up and then click into place uh, and there you go uh, so then after that you just want to fill up these panels and then rotate out the hands there's that and then next fold over these uh, pieces right here and you want to do the same thing right here and rotate that around, close that up, and then close that right there up. And then uh, move up these panels right here. And same there. Okay, so we got the arms done. Now, uh, next you just want to swivel around the abdomen. And then after that, you just want to open up the uh, torso pieces, the chest pieces, I should say. And then flip up the head. And then until it clicks into place there. And then next, bring down that panel right there that covers his face. And then close up the chest panels. And then finally, what you want to do is, um, so there's these little uh, tabs right here that go uh, in between this part right here. And that should just click into place. There we go. And once you got that all done, there you guys have Optimus Prime in his robot mode. And yeah, I gotta say, this this is definitely where the figure shines, because oh man, this this looks so good. <laughs> I, I don't care what anyone says, this looks fantastic. I mean most people will probably agree with me, but this I whoever hates on this figure, I, I don't care what they say. This is a nice looking Optimus Prime. So yeah, uh, Hasbro, you you better release this for like not just you know targets. You should <laughs> you gotta re release this under normal uh, Steel Series packaging because I know there's people out there. I I was one of them that was trying to look for this guy for a couple days or so, and I, you know, and then he kept selling out, and I finally found one. Yeah, yeah, you gotta re-release this <laughs> because you know otherwise there's there's gonna be limited amounts, and then not everyone's gonna get it. So. Or at least not everyone who really wants it can't get it. So, 
Uh, I want that opportunity to be available for everyone. But anyways, let's get back to the figure itself. So yeah. Um, so let's take a look at the head sculpt and details. Uh, okay, so that head sculpt, perfect. Just perfect. <laughs> Because with the uh, the Bumbley movie one, it was ba I guess I'm assuming it was based off concept art, like we saw on the artwork for that figure, and it didn't look too much like like it, it like you could tell it's supposed to be Bumbley movie Prime, but it's like an original version. Like his head was a little wider and stuff. It looked closer to the cartoon, I guess you could say. We'll compare that, you know, in the comparisons later. But this right here, they they actually nailed the head sculptor right here. Um, so if you want an accurate Bumblebee movie, uh, slash Rise of the Beast Prime head sculpt, then get this guy. <laughs> like maybe buy another one and just give it to your Bumblebee movie Prime, because this, this looks a lot better. Um, so yeah. And of course, you got all the silver here. Looking nice. Uh, they, uh, gave him yellow here around the waist, and in the movie it was just like, just like a dark gray. Uh, although on some of the renders, or all of them I should say, most of them, like, the, the ones that are like on the toys and stuff, including the one for this one. Yeah, he does have like the orangish yellow, but um but in the actual movie it was just kinda like kinda dark, like a grayish almost. Um I think it still looks good here. Still feels more like prime that way. Uh so yeah. And really nice silver here for the knees. And I really like the detailing that they put into the shins. And the feet, they fix the feet. That that that's why I don't want to swap the like the legs with um or like yeah the legs with this guy with the S thirty eight because this guy's got better looking feet. <laughs> They're more accurate and they you know they don't look flat like the other ones did. So yeah, and get some nice detail here too for the uh, forearms. And here's the side here. And on the back, nice and clean looking, and you know. Uh, accurate to how that looks in the movie. I mean, he didn't have like four holes, but or five, I should say, if you count the hole there for the screw. Um, but you know, still really nice detailing. Let's focus in on that because that looks nice. And yeah, really, really good looking. Um, and he's got like ran like two screw holes back there. Uh, but yeah, really, really dig the way this guy came out. Um, so anyways, now for the articulation, his head is on a ball joint, so he can move side to side. He can look up. He can't really look down. That's only as far as it goes. His shoulders, uh, this is one of my complaints with the figure as well. He's got this shoulder movement where it just kind of like, you know, collides in and I don't like that. Uh, what you could do though is you just take back this piece right here and then bring this down. And you could close that back up. And if you want him to have like in and out movement this way, then you could do that. You don't get a lot, but you get some in and out movement that way. So, um, but yeah. But again, it's another thing where I could kind of, I could kind of, you know, for like in a way forgive uh, the designers because, you know, it's a little impossible to do, especially with a transforming figure. Um, but yeah. Uh, of course, yeah, he's got shoulder swivel. Um,. And then he does have a bicep swivel, a double bend at the elbow, um, a swivel at the wrist, and in and out movement, uh, a waist swivel. He does technically have an ab crunch too because of his transformation, so I do like that. His legs can kick up this far. Um, this is here's the way how it works. It's not like a typical like kind of um, movement, as you can see. Like the the joint right there is like forwards and. So, uh, that way, like, this waist piece doesn't interfere with that. I do like that design, like, that design right there. That's pretty good. Um, he does have thigh swivel. His knees can bend this far. And he does have ankle pivot. And the feet do move back and forth. They're on ball joints, I think. Yeah. Um, and that's it for art articulation. That's pretty nice articulation, these guys. Especially, you know, with the ab crunch. Only complaint is that I, I i i hate that <laughs> it's no just no um but yeah besides that really nice um so uh yeah anyways now for accessories comes with his little cannon thing right here and you can just simply attach that into prime's hand right here you can do it on both sides i prefer to do it on this side because you know it's well it's what the box shows and whatnot so um 
So yeah, then, so what you do is you flip in the hands, and then on the other side, there's these little posts, and of course, there's a hole right here at the back of the cannon, and I'll just plug right in there, and there's that. Um, yeah, really nice. It, if only it was a bit bigger. That, that's my, you know, only gripe with that. And of course, he just come with his sword, which he cannot hold, but rather, uh, there's holes on, um... These little gray pieces right here, and they plug uh, this plugs right into here, and that's how it was in the movie. He didn't hold the sword; he had it like coming out of his form, um, which I think was pretty cool. And so now with his accessories, he looks really, really awesome. So I really do quite dig that. So, um, anyways, now for the robot mode size comparisons. Let me get my mouse right down here. Uh, so yeah, now for the rub mode size comparisons. Here he is with RC. Here he is with Bumblebee. Here he is, well, why not? <laughs> Let's just do this funny little comparison. Here he is with uh, Freezer. Just, just, why not? <laughs> Um, here he is with, let's move him to the center, here he is with Air Razor and Sheetor. Uh, here he is with Foul Trap. Here he is with Scourge. This is really good scale right here, I'd say. Let me straighten it out. There we go. Uh, here he is with the SS38. And yeah, as you can see, he's got these horrible looking feet. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but those feet just look horrendous. It looks, it looks like um, these feet, but like they like squashed them in and like squared them in. It's, uh, I don't know. But I still like SS38 though. That that still is a good figure. But honestly, th this guy is for the win. Um, in like except for like I mean, this guy has like more proper outward articulation. That's one of the areas where he wins, and he also wins in terms of you know the back of the truck. But aside from that, I think this guy takes the cake. Um, but again, I still do like this guy. I kind of wish though they made a more accurate one. So yeah. And last but not least, here he is with the original mainline one. And, uh, yeah, this is more Voyager scale. This is only a little bit taller than the Deluxe. That is not a Voyager scale. I'm sorry, that, that just, no. <laughs> but still a good figure, though. But, um, but I like this one more, like, way more because, you know, he's got more detail paint and stuff. And, you know, he's, he's a lot more fun. But I still like this guy. Whatever you prefer is your opinion. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the robot mode size comparisons. I don't know how I missed this, but I completely forgot one step. Come on, go in, go in. <laughs> ah, there we go. Flipping the wheels. I, I don't know how I forgot that. <laughs> Just got in a bit of a rush there, but th there you go. Just so no one complains at me. And of course, with the Steel Series reviews, before we end the review, let's take a look at the backdrop. Uh, of course, it's all buzzworthy themes, but um, except for you know the you know image that they use itself, so we got well two buzzworthy Bumblebee, Steel Series, Rise of the Beast, Transformers, and of course the arc right here. This is obviously that you know uh, the the this is basically the scenario that began the whole cool um, chase scene in Peru. Um, and yeah, it looks really nice. You could put his prime in there or whatever. And you know, although in the scene he was in his alt mode, so you probably want to put him in that mode. But yeah, that's that's what he looks like with that backdrop. So yeah, there you go. If if, if you want to keep that in in your collection, then okay, then this is what it looks like with with prime on a heli. So um, yeah, there you guys have that. And there you guys have my review for the Transformers Studio Series. Voyager Class, Rise of the Beast, Optimus Prime. And, yes, this guy is a must-have, because 
especially in your Steel Series Rise of Beast collection, because, you know, well, first of all, he's Optimus Prime. Second of all, this guy, they made really, really well. They did a really nice job on him. Um, you know, so I still do have some complaints. Oops, I missed. This flipped out. Um, I still do have some complaints with him, um, you know, especially with the way the shoulders work and, um, you know, the back of the cab. Um, you know, uh, they, they could have done better with both of those, but, you know, again, I could kind of understand, like, you know, why they couldn't do them the way I'd like or many others would like, but, um, but, you know, it'd still be nice if they could try and see if they can, you know, um, manage with that. Um, but overall, this, this guy is really, really nice. A definite upgrade over the, um, SS38. I mean, well, that one's still good to have as your Bumbling Movie Optimus Prime, but, you know, in terms of accuracy, this guy's closer to his movie model than that was with its movie model, so. Um, yeah, really nice figure, well done. Hope you can find him, and I seriously hope that Hasbro still releases this guy in the mainline Steel series, because... Um, you know, not everyone who really wants this guy will, unfortunately, won't be able to get this guy, so, um, so yeah, I hope they do that, and, um, yeah, but overall, great figure, uh, definitely buy if, you know, you see him, and yeah, so anyways, guys, make sure you guys like, subscribe, comment, share for more, and comment down below what you guys think of this figure, so, anyways, guys, as always, tell all, R1.